Hi! It's the art news video for August the 9th. Let's see. Um, again, these are from articles that I read on the artnewspaper.com. Please check it out. It's a really good source of information on the arts in terms of news and what's going on. I, it's, it's totally my go-to. So I recommend it highly. So please check it out. Uh, let's see. Okay, Sotheby's Asia has opened a huge 24,000 square foot, two-story, non-selling exhibition space in downtown Hong Kong. There's also a concept store, retail space, um, and they've announced that some staff shakeups with a new deputy chair and several other senior level changes and promotions. All this as they get ready to make some redundancies across all their locations. So, they're, that's, bad, that's the bad part of the news. <laughs> is that some people are probably going to be let go from the organization. But, it is kind of cool that they opened a new space uh, for um, exhibitions. Not, you know, we'll have a retail space, a store in it where you can make some purchases and things like that, probably for merch, uh, but it's mostly an exhibition space, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the 30th anniversary of the Armory Show in New York is coming up on September the 5th, so if you're in the New York area, check it out. It's like one of the biggest art shows of the year, it's really huge. Um, and the Armory, as well as Expo Chicago, were both acquired by London-based Freeze, which is an arts organization out of London. This year's Armory Show will host over 235 galleries from 35 countries. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, Musée Rodin in Paris if you don't know, Rodin is a very famous sculptor. Uh, so the Rodin, Rodin Musée in Paris is partnering with a private collector and opening a new museum in Shanghai called Centre des Arts de Rodin. Uh, this is welcome news after Musée Rodin's previously announced satellite branch in Shenzhen was canceled. So this is good. It's um, it's not like it. It's not like a branch. Uh, it's a partnership. So it's not a branch of the museum. It's a partnership to open a new center um, featuring the sculpture of Rodin. So that's kind of cool. And a let's see, a giant pigeon sculpture <laughs> by Ivan Argot will be installed on New York's High Line uh, sometime this autumn. If you don't know about New York's High Line, it's uh, basically it's a raised or elevated platform that runs through parts of this part of the city that used to be uh, part of the um, the subway system, their elevated portion, and uh, but they've removed the uh, <clears throat> subway part, the rail line, and made it into like a pedestrian mall, and so they're putting this. Uh, giant pigeon sculpture up there. The, um, the, the artist promo photos and uh, illustrations make it look pretty cool. <laughs> it's, uh, there's one where uh, it's showing like a street view going on and underneath the elevated uh, part of that and this giant p pigeon is like up on top just looking down. <laughs> It's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. But it looks like it's going to be a really cool sculpture. So if you're in the New York area this autumn, look for that to be happening. Let's see, what else? Ah, Abu Dhabi's Sovereign Wealth Fund is acquiring a major minority stake in Sotheby's, uh, valued at a billion dollars. It wasn't a surprise to industry insiders because Sotheby's has been floating this idea of selling shares for several years, uh, but now it looks like Abu Dhabi is going to buy into that. So that's kind of cool. 
Uh, let's see. Um, New York's Storm King Sculpture Fund, or Sculpture Park, uh, and their unionized workers are ratifying their first contracts. Yay! I applaud these actions because I think all workers in all enterprises, companies, corporations, government entities, and everything should be unionized. I just think all workers should be unionized. You know, it's not all about the corporations and the companies. You know, people have a right to run a business. Well, actually, it's not a right. People do not have a right to, uh, to run a business or open a business, at least in the United States. It's a privilege, and they really do have an obligation, in my opinion, to care for their workers. It's not all about them make, getting rich and making money. You know, that should be part of it. They certainly have, you know, the, you know, they sh certainly should be allowed to do that. However, not at the expense of workers and paying their workers minimum wage. No one can live on minimum wage. Minimum wage is a pay for high school students and their summer jobs. Adults should be paid professional wages and a professional level of income, which they can actually live on. That's what I think. So it's just my opinion. Leave some comments if you don't agree. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to grow the channel and uh, make it informative and fun. It's all about fun, so comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable commenting or sharing ideas on the YouTube comment section on this platform, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash yourartdude. You can follow me there for free, and there are dedicated chats where we can share ideas and, and thoughts, and I even share some of my artwork that I'm working on on there so, uh, prior to it becoming public. So that's kind of one of the benefits of going on to my Patreon page. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> After I <laughs> made that <laughs> statement, which some people will see as a political statement. I don't see it as a political statement. I see it as a human rights statement. But anyway, huge controversy in Slovakia. Um, Slovakia has a coalition government which consists of parties from the left and parties from the right. So they've had to form a coalition in order to govern the country. Uh, but um, it looks like... Uh, and please forgive me on these names. I'm not a Slovakian, so... Uh, Matej Drilika, who is the head of the National Theater, and Alexandra Kusa, the director of the Slovak National Gallery, have been dismissed. It also looks like Bratislav uh, Pains, Pains, something like that, uh, the head of the Slovak National Museum, Maybe next. Uh, the staff of the institutions are siding with the, their, their former and current leaders, depending on which institution it is, calling it attack on the freedom of creation and freedom of speech. Uh, I don't find this surprising. Uh, political parties from the right have traditionally purged government institutions of anyone who doesn't agree with their ideas. Um, this happened in the late 80s and early 90s in the United States when funding was stripped from the National Endowment for the Arts. So this, this certainly happens. Uh, I don't think it's right just because, you know, people from political organizations who are representing people who have extreme ideas should not be allowed to exercise their ideas on cultural institutions, in my opinion. Art is for everybody them included, but not exclusively. So, just, just my opinion on that. <laughs> and I saw an interesting article reported that the Warhol Foundation, as in Andy Warhol, uh, intends to sell the artist's works on eBay, which is <laughs> kind of surprising. eBay, wow, eBay. Uh, but yeah, they're, they want to raise money for arts organizations through their grants programs. So that's kind of cool that they want to, you know, raise money so they can offer more grants and things like that. But it's just interesting that they're going to sell it on eBay. Uh, 
good luck to them. That's what I have to say. So anyway, that's today's art news podcast. Uh, so feel free to comment in the section. Join me on Patreon. And remember, like, subscribe, and follow. Have a good weekend.